Hey guys, this is John with the Alpha Channel Update for Monday, July 1st, 2024. Hope you guys are having an awesome summer and a great start to your week. Today we have Conan the Barbarian 233 with pencils by Ron Lim and a story by Michael Higgins. I'm just going to be up front with you guys. This is anti-white Jewish propaganda. This story starts off with a story about Conan's parents. And um, <clears throat> they say that in a scene or in a short story, it's all about the main characters making decisions. So these are Conan's parents deciding whether or not to subject their child to a brutal uh, sort of birth ritual, not really a coming of age ritual because he's an infant. Um, and I, this is one of the stories that I bought when I was collecting comics as a kid. The, the artwork is incredible. Ron Lim's women are beautiful. His men are, are incredibly masculine and handsome. And this is just great artwork. Everything is posed right. The characters look awesome. They all look in, like individuals. The compositions are all beautiful, and the story is absolute garbage. No one makes any choices. No one makes any significant choices. Everything is, is happens by luck or by stupid circumstance. So again, let me explain what, what's happening here. Apparently, Conan's father married a half-Sumerian woman, which doesn't really seem to matter, other than a couple snide comments about mixed blood. This is totally, Michael Higgins was born in Brooklyn. I said <clears throat> earlier when I, was, when, I, when I was doing these a couple episodes ago that if the story's great, I'm not gonna look into who the writer is. I don't wanna know anything about them. This story is awful. The decisions the characters make are just repulsive. So this is the husband and wife deciding about whether or not to leave their child out in the freezing cold overnight. And they decide to go go forward with it. And the the members, the other members of the clan are sort of force Conan's father into this. This is a reprehensible child serum, child sort of is reminiscent of uh, circumcision. You know, you're gonna go gen, uh, <clears throat> gen, gen, genitally mutilate a child. Genitally, genitally, God, that's hard to say. Genitally mutilate a child when they're as soon as they're born. That's a Jewish. That's a Jewish ritual. This is a Jewish written story. It's awful. Jews should not be able to write white characters. Jews should not have any part of white culture. They've been putting their hands in it for way too long, and they've destroyed Western civilization. I believe Jews are 100% responsible for all the problems in the world today. And this book is a thin end of the wedge. They have they they leave a child out in the out in the freezing cold to be either ripped apart by wild animals or to freeze to death. And Conan, the infant, is lucky enough to tumble down the hill. And so here's one of the things that happens by circumstance. One of the soldiers encounters a she-wolf in the area where they've left the child out and murders it. And the she-wolf attacked a group of men when there's an infant being left behind, which is unreasonable. And then the she-wolf's body somehow vanishes and Conan, the child, rolls down the hill to find her litter of pups, which haven't dispersed in the cold. And this is, this is written by a guy. This, so this guy grew up in Brooklyn. He doesn't know anything about the forest. He doesn't know anything about the wild. He's, this, is a, this is a hack. This writer should have never been given this opportunity. He certainly doesn't deserve it. So Conan's father and his mother are completely distraught. This goes on for like six pages. And then the father goes out and finds his son, surrounded by the wolves and uh, takes him back to the mother with no thought to how the wolf puppies are going to grow up or they're now left in the wild without a, without a mother. Uh, and at least you saw this in Game of Thrones. I believe J.R.R. Martin is also a Jew. But at least in Game of Thrones, when they found the dire wolf puppies, they brought them home. In this, they don't do that. In this, we just get more of Conan's childhood, which is visually appealing but ha ha plays no part in the story no one makes any decisions this is just everyday stuff until you get to some violent childhood sort of fights where clearly this writer is taking out some revenge for the kids who bullied him when everyone gets bullied as a kid and how you deal with it marks who you are as its character building 
So here we have some pages where Conan and the other kids are getting bullied by each other. And this, again, this is a self-insert where this writer, Michael Higgins, wrote about how he was bullied and someone teased him for being not full blood. They wrote this into the, the little fight here about, about Conan not being full Sumerian blood, which is, I don't believe that was ever part of the story. And it doesn't matter. This is a Jewish self-insert. This is, when your culture worships Woody Allen and Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld and you don't have any heroes, your idea of heroism is snarky comments, then this is the kind of nonsense you get when you let Jews write your culture. And this is just a terrible Conan story. Conan doesn't behave like Conan. He behaves like a snarky New York Jew. And so do the other characters in this book. And it's, uh, this is just, it's terrible. It's pathetic. Ron Lim's art cannot save this story. And uh, <clears throat> this person obviously knows nothing about the forest, knows nothing. So here's it. Here's it. Conan meets another character. It, like I was saying, no decisions are being made. No decisions are being made. It's just bickering. All this book has been so far is bickering with no one taking a stand, no one doing anything out of the ordinary. Everyone is just going uh, paint by numbers of the culture. And this is a sad entry into the Conan the Barbarian, uh, I don't know, canon. The artwork is amazing. The colors are amazing. amazing. George Russo on colors. Ron Lim, who went on to do The Silver Surfer, just doing incredible, incredible characterizations of these, the, the people saying absolutely trite, envy, spiteful things, just absolutely horrible words in their mouths. And the idea that this shining city is where adventure is going to be found when you have the mountains and the forest all around you. Like I was saying, this, this writer doesn't know anything about how kids have fun in the wilderness. And their idea of fun when Conan is a teenager, apparently he's run away from home. There's no mention of where his parents are. As a matter of fact, a couple pages back when he's hunting this deer and he bumps into this other kid who is also obviously Jewish. They say he's Azer, but he's from another tribe. And uh, so what happens is Conan and this kid basically run away from home and they're children now. Conan's not a young warrior. His parents haven't been murdered. He hasn't been a slave or a gladiator. These kids decide to go basically uh, on a uh, breaking and entering slash joyriding theft spree. They don't steal any horses, but they may as well have. They, um, they go to bars and hang out with hot girls and they, they go and um, <clears throat> they go and try and loot a temple, a very large tower, you know, and try and climb it and break in. And then one kid falls down. Let's see, that's up here, actually. So they decide that they're going to uh, try and storm this temple. And the kid, the Conan's new pal, slips and falls down into the courtyard below. And Conan is watching from above. And the kid is uh, confronted by a guard, and Conan drops a box of jewels onto his head. And there's nothing about this. This is just like Scooby-Doo adventures. What was awesome about Conan was there was a level of realism in all of the stories, even when they were unreal. The way the characters behaved with each other had some semblance of real life. And in this, this is just cartoon until Conan actually down here at the end murders one of these guards. Like they had just been kids playing at, you know, kid stuff. They may as well have been robbing tip jars out of, out of bars. But he goes and murders a guard here. And uh, then they decide, then they decide that they're going to join the army. And here you have them over two pages, the course of two pages, going down and joining the military. And again, this is done in a typically Jewish, no consequence fashion, where these kids, they're like smart ass children. Conan is not Conan in this. I don't know who he is, but he's not Conan. And so they they raid with this, this band of Sumerians for a while until they're threatening to raid this kid's homeland, this kid's home village. And then Conan, in one panel, explains that he's spread a rumor throughout the ranks that has caused the army to change direction and not invade this village. We get another panel where some witch is now involved and she has burnt this, this other kid's house. 
and he goes in and all he finds is a box of jewels. This is like some Jewish fever dream about the the um, <clears throat> about the the Holocaust. There's another panel up here where the kid says where he tells Conan that he had told him that his family was dead, but they're really not. Again, this is like Jews who fled Germany to Poland and escaped the gas chambers six times. Again, this is so. This is Conan 233. Amazing art, absolute garbage writing. This is anti-white propaganda written by a Jew. And Jews are the problem in all society right now. And uh, according to Cliff High, we only have to deal with them for a couple more weeks. And some news is going to come out that is going to break their sort of... This has been the shortest secret empire the world has ever seen. They've only been in charge for a couple weeks, relatively, you know, like since 9-11. Since Obviously, they killed Kennedy, but they still had to pull the, pull the strings from behind the curtain. And the curtain's only really come down since Trump and Hillary failed, you know? It's only really, the mask is only coming off recently. So, so you were at the end of the shortest empire the world's ever known. Shortest secret empire the world's ever known. The Jewish secret empire. It is ending. And I'm really happy about it because they're terrible people. Here's Hearn, the forest god. This is Wildwood Tarot, card for today. July 1st, 2024. So today we have the Six of Arrows transition. And this is just like the uh, big fellow on the book, the hooded god on the boat. Karen, I think is usually his name on the boat. The Chaos Star is, I think, usually eight arrows, not just six, but it's painted on his sail here. So this is the Wildwood Tarot, which I really love. I've been showing these off once a day. Um, I've been working on my 3D skate park, so I haven't shown any art in like a week. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, please check out 26 hours of audiobooks here on YouTube. The Legacy of a Mad Scientist and the Legend of Ashley Fox. We have a comic book also for you guys out at ashleyfox.ninja. And you can download this and check it out. This is where Ashley becomes a Valkyrie. This is well after the two audiobooks, the 26 hours of audiobooks that I have posted here on YouTube. But this ninja doesn't wear black. She's a ninja babysitter in that she ends up taking care of a bunch of orphans. And uh, I hope the next issue of Conan, I have the next issue, 234. Um, I started to have these, I think I have these almost every issue now because obviously I was buying them myself. This is a sequel to the last issue, which is just really terrible. It's really awful. At the end here, Conan accuses this kid, this Azir kid, of being a demon because he was able to walk into the fire and then walk out and not be burned. And so, you know, we're going to find out what, whether or not he's a demon or how much magic is involved. Jews are always doing shit with magic because they, can't, they don't believe in work. Because they don't believe in labor. They try to cheat everybody all the time. And they believe that's okay. They believe they're an ethnic group that has the right to cheat their neighbors. And that's why no one can get along with them. So boycott, divest, sanction, and ghost Jews. See you guys.